Iron Maiden are one of the most successful heavy metal bands to emerge after the initial punk refusal of all the forms of established types of music. We talked to Bruce Dixon, the singer of Iron Maiden, and guitarist Adrian Smith. Let's see, when did you decide to start your tour in Poland and um, beyond the Iron Curtain? Well, because we wanted to tour there, and August was the only time we could tour there, really. Um, I mean, there's nowhere else to tour in Europe because everybody's on holiday. Yeah. So, um... You told deprived countries they couldn't afford to go on holidays. Is yeah. that so? Well, <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I assume that... Uh, we were just told by the Polish promoter that August was fine. Um, if we hadn't gone to Poland, we'd probably have gone down to Greece or somewhere like that and uh, all around there. Mm -hmm. So, August, we spent touring Poland and Yugoslavia and around France, a few shows in Italy and everything. But if I'm not wrong, that's one of the very first tours after Stone's play. I mean, mm. talking about Poland. Well, the first big tours, mm. I mean, I think, yeah. What's the, the idea going in there? What's the point of going in there? Curiosity. And also to... Well, we get a lot of fan letters from, from Poland and the Iron Curtain countries. And uh, when it was suggested that we went, I mean, we said, well, yes, why not? I mean... <laughs> I mean, why not? We've, ne we've <laughs> never been there. Let's go. Um, and it turned from a... The idea was to take a small show, and then a, about four or five weeks before, we said, well, no, we, we ought to take everything, really. I mean, if we're going to go, we should go and do a proper job. So we did, and we did, and we went, and it was great. So we shall go back. Sorry, it's not profitable to go there. No, but we never really bothered about doing anything for money anyway, so... Mm. And we do make money, but I'm not entirely sure how. <laughs> <laughs> with, this, with this show on the road. Maybe the T-shirts. <laughs> well, yes, uh, you, can't, you can't sell those in, in, in Eastern European countries. No, you, you don't You're not make... allowed to sell? Uh, no. Not T-shirts, no records, nothing. You it must be good. Sort out items in black marks. <laughs> oh yes, black market ones. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, but obviously, it's um, it's normal that Yugoslavs uh, knew your music because oh, you, the oh, records, you, uh, right? you, you Yugoslavia. How about uh, how did Polish react to your music? Did they know the numbers? Did yeah, they sing along? Yeah, or? yeah. I mean, number of the beasts they are up on. Peace of mind, obviously. See, what they do is they get the records in the black market, mm -hmm. and then um, um, sort of bootleg it, and it goes around the country gradually. They get to play a few tracks on the Polish radio too, which obviously gets taped. Um, so they tend to be about, uh, I suppose, about a year behind mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, actually knowing all the songs from each album. So the number of the beasts they were fine on. Peace of mind, you know, they were a little bit unsure of the new album, they didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, still the reaction was very strong. Just because you're there and you're playing and you're, you know, you're having fun. I mean, they were fabulous. Yeah, but it doesn't make you my happy, does it? Oh, it not happy. Right. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> don't get fear in your position. <laughs> no, no. no. Fiona, uh, yeah, I'm sure Fiona doesn't <coughs> object to us being told of you, Fiona. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not slandering. I'm not slandering the record company. Mm. Ask me another question. I'll slander them for cash. Oh, I see. Is there a, a slander? Yeah. Or like that? For, for a fiver, I'll give you slander. For a tenner, I'll legal legal writs. Oh, wow. <laughs> Would you accept uh, American Express? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you like to see my tits? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, how big the crowd was there? And, uh, um, in Poland, anywhere between it five shows, anywhere between six and ten thousand, depending on the size of the venue. And mm -hmm. Hungary was thirty-six thousand one show. Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite nice. That was huge. It was fabulous. Outdoors. Did you think of doing a live album? Yes. All Four Nights at Hammersmith. Oh, no, I thought this is in, it's in uh, European <laughs> countries or something. Uh, well, well, no, South because, South. Uh, because it, w it was bad enough getting the equipment in and getting a camera crew in, because we made a documentary of it. Oh, have you? It yeah, it's oh. being shown on MTV oh, yeah. today. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's an hour-long documentary. Um, but, uh, yes, uh, taking a mobile in there as well would have been uh, incredible problems. Just with, you know, different shows every night. And uh, Also, it was the first five shows of the world tour. We hadn't played for nine months. Mm -hmm. You don't record the first five shows. <laughs>
You'll practice a few times. Yeah, you're gonna have a yeah, few well, Obviously, you were um, well rehearsed before you embarked upon the tour of Eastern Europe. <laughs> but, <laughs> ob- but on the other hand, it's uh, you are the more you play, the better you become. So, shall we say that uh, English people or whoever in a couple of months are going mm-hmm. to see you are going to get a much better show? It's going to be tighter. Uh, to an extent, I mean, we never, we never really do. Uh, I don't think we ever really do bad shows. We do shows that. Oh, that was no implication. <laughs> no, whatsoever, no, no. But uh, no, I agree. Wherever you start a tour, you know, it's always going to be better two months in. The last two world tours we started in England. So England has always had a raw deal mm-hmm. the last two years. No, so I had that impression. I've seen you a couple of gigs and never thought <laughs> they were a raw deal. You know what I mean? Oh, well, in that case, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Polish people got great shows. I haven't seen you this year, so I can't say. <laughs> but they, well, you see, the thing is, we've always started mm-hmm. our tours in England. Mm-hmm. And people always say the shows are great. Mm. Yeah. Well, this year, but two months later, we know that the shows are better. So if the shows start out great, and get better, then fine. So when we go to Poland, they thought the sh- shows were great. We thought the shows were great. We had a great time. We went to Yugoslavia. We had a fabulous time, and we thought the shows were good. Obviously, now things are just oiled a little bit better, a little bit, a little bit smoother. That's all. Well, that uh, I remember if you t- televising, you know, filming your show. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's live footage. I remember footage, uh, uh, Steve saying that uh, when you play Yugoslavia again, which was this time, it would be a revenge tour. Because the first time, the the band was all, oh yes. Well, then we took everything to Yugoslavia this year. I mean, you know. The whole show that uh, you present to oh, in yeah. England or yeah, yeah. whenever in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything. Very fair. Yeah, well, what? Um, I mean, did you have any prejudice towards uh, people? Prejudice? Non-rocking, non-rocking people. I mean, very apprehensive how they would react or something. No. Because I mean, if you play in England, you know what to uh, what reaction can no, expect uh, from. You the have to take of, if you go to a new <coughs> country and. Uh, it must be a, a bigger challenge now to come to think new, of it. You go to a new country that hasn't experienced you before, you have to go with your eyes and ears wide open. Because mm-hmm. you don't know how they're going to react. I mean, even if they like you, you don't know how they're going to react. They might stand there and go like that. That must, might be a fantastic reaction for that country. Mm-hmm. You know, So you have to do a couple of shows and talk to people afterwards is the way. Mm-hmm. But in Poland, there was no doubt. I mean, it just went nuts. I mean, leaping around everywhere. It's great. Mm. Yeah. One of the best audiences in the world, without any shadow of doubt. Polish. How, how has it otherwise been in the country, you know, compared when you're touring the Western countries? Well, obviously, it's obviously it's, it's a very poor country economically. I mean, um, uh, fantastic people. I mean, I had so much respect for them after having been there, seeing. You know the problems under which they have to live. You know, not being able to get this, not being able to get that, and to cure for whatever they can get. Yeah, and and <coughs> not even having access. That was the thing that that got me. They don't even have access to most of the things that we've got in the West. Even if in the West, you know, you can't afford something, you can at least borrow it or hire it or go and get it or know somebody who's got one. It's nothing like that in Poland. This one? You know, I mean, like a, a, a computer or a record or something. Yeah. You know, you can go to a friend and listen to it. You can go to it. But in Poland, you can't. And, and that's, you know, even books. I mean, you know. What about the organization? You know, there was it running small. Did oh, that, any hiccups, so that side like was that. fantastic. Better yeah. than a lot of places in Europe, in Western Europe. Mm. The organization, the humpers, the power, the staging was superb. I suppose they tr- treated you like VIPs when you get a band like you, you know, in, in Boston. Well, that, so they, they were freaked out it. when they saw four trucks. They'd never seen four trucks <laughs> after half these concerts. It was like, with all this equipment coming out, it's like, oh, shit, what's this, you know, what's this, you know. And, um, you know, we were very nice as well, and we tried to, you know, go out of our way to... To behave yourself. You something. know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, well, b- because there was no heavy, you know... Um, you can't go here, you can't go there. We could do whatever we wanted. And uh, we just used to go out and go drinking with all the Polish people in their little clubs and mm-hmm. everything. They were fabulous. Great. great no, you're, you're talking about the, um, all the gear. And the, is it true that you use 120,000 voltage in station? 120,000 volts? 
Uh, I mean, that's what, what's written in there. That's why I'm no, asking. No, what, what's. What's, yeah, sorry, that's yes. Right, yes. You do? Yes, the PAS. Mm. Okay, and use it tonight. <laughs> I don't know, it depends whether we can get it all in. Um, it's no need, really. Uh, yeah, I mean, we couldn't fit it all in, yeah, I doubt. Um, but for, you know, uh, we've got, I think in Europe, I think we're taking out about a hundred, about a hundred thousand in Europe. And we go up to about 160 in America. We had an extra 60,000 for the big stadiums. Mm. Um, but this, this will do. This system with four trucks. We, I mean, we happily do Wembley or somewhere like that. With it. Not that we're doing Wembley, but why, why have you decided not to do Wembley? I mean, obviously you play four Wembley nights at Hammersmith Audio. It's two Wembleys. That's right. Um, do you prefer Hammersmith Audio yeah. to to yeah, Wembley? Yes, I do. I think kids prefer it. Uh, you get a better deal in yeah, any case. I yeah. personally hate Wembley Stadium. Uh, I personally have some very, I had some very bad experiences as a, as a spectator mm -hmm. at Wembley with the security and with bouncers. And I just thought that I wouldn't like to ask anybody else to pay seven pounds to be treated like a, a piece of dog dirt. So you know, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get you know donate any of my money to employ um, the security staff there, mm -hmm. you know, it's because I think I mean, some of them are animals. Mm -hmm. um, whereas at Hammersmith, they have shows all the time, the kids know what to do, what not to do, the security guards are friendly, you know, it's all very mellow. People can get in with enjoying the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. Much better. So if you had a bad experience at Wembley, how do you find playing big stadiums in America? <coughs> well, I mean, obviously, you cannot see somebody who is a uh, hundred yards down. No, but that's different because um, England's a much England's a much smaller country. So I'm aware. Do you care <laughs> more about the fans in England or, let's say, in America? No, I think in America, if you went to play a small stadium, people would genuinely a small theatre, people would genuinely think you were mad. Yeah, that's right. Um, for a start, uh, if there are. Um, 10,000 in people, 10,000 people in Denver want to see Iron Maiden, and you announce one concert in a 3,000 seat theatre, there's going to be 6,000 people going to wreck the theatre because they can't get in. That is not the way to go and play Denver. So you well, might... Well, so, doing it twice. Well, you didn't do twice it twice. Or three times in Denver. Three times, you know. So you do three times, so the United States tour takes you 15 months. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's such a big place. You know, there's such a lot of people, <coughs> and um, uh, it would take you 15. It takes us five months at the moment, and that's playing 10,000 seaters. So five, month, five, five months American tour now. Yeah, on its own. Yeah, on its own. It's going to 11 yeah. months altogether. The, the yeah, yeah the Nichols but said you're, you're doing another yeah. 11 months. How yeah. do you look at it, prospect? <laughs> knowing that uh, I look you're going to live out of a suitcase for me. <laughs> Well, I've been living out of a suitcase for three years. Does it ever get you down? I mean, did, would you, wouldn't you like to go back home? Um, yes. Sit, I mean, uh, I'll sit I'll down, go. spend your Sunday reading the Times or whatever, <laughs> scrolls up the world or whatever, watch television. Yes, I mean, I, um, I do, I do, you know, I'm very fond of home, but I accept that, you know, for the moment, I'm doing this. And tomorrow I'm doing this, the day after I'm doing something else. So if I arrive at home, then, then I'm at home. Yeah, I mean, I just take each day at a time. I try not to, I'm aware of what's happening, mm -hmm. or what's supposed to be happening for a long period of time in, in the future, but um, I don't sit and plan and go, how many days till I go home, you know, because that's the way that you end up turning into a lunatic um, on the road. Did you really woke up enthusiasm to go and, uh, and play a gig in ten months' time, for example? I mean, after you've you been change, ten months. You change, change, change the songs at all during the tour? Not particularly. Mm -hmm. not so you don't shuffle them, them around or what? Not particularly, no. Not particularly, no. I find I, I would derive less enjoyment out of that. <coughs> because um, playing, um, playing a set is like playing an instrument. It's like playing, you play, say you play, play the same guitar. So you play the same piece on a mm -hmm. guitar, okay, 
Um, now, you can perform that one song on the acoustic guitar on the same instrument ten nights, and every night it will be different, depending on what you feel like and everything else like that. Now, um, if it's uh, a very, you know, incredibly, you know, say it's a piece, of, you know, the, the, the classical piece, a fantastic piece of guitar music, in which there's many, many different ways of interpreting it and everything else like that, then it's only an excuse to say, well, I think we should rewrite it because I'm bored. It simply means that you're not approaching it in the right way. It's the way you approach the set. If you approach the set as being boring, it will be boring, mm -hmm. even though it's the same songs. If you approach it, each song, every night, different. You know, today I feel different to the, to, you know, to yesterday. Um, I don't try, I try and make today the same as yesterday. And I, when I walk on stage, I just walk on stage, I sing the first song, and the next song. If I feel pissed off in the third song, I feel pissed off. And if I feel happy in the fourth song, I feel happy. Well, you know, and, and that's the way to, to, make, to make it interesting. And that way it's interesting for the audience. Because they're watching you just be yourself and relate to the song and relate to them, rather than you trying to be what you were yesterday. If I do a really good show a week ago, and I hold that show in my mind and I try to repeat it, I will always get mad, because I can never do it. But just when I'm feeling really shitty, I start to feel really happy in the third number, and I think, this is a really good show, what's happening? And you're just on a roll, and it just happens. You said the show changed in months um, uh, from the previous shows. I mean, do, do you still have Eddie? I read somewhere that they're dropping it. Dropping in where? Eddie, I mean, uh, <laughs> from the whole thing. No. First of all, it wasn't on the record cover. Yeah, no, we're not dropping him. We're playing games with people. I see. <laughs> well, it's here tonight. Yeah. The first time it's not on the, on the album cover, anyway. Mm -hmm. Or is it there? Well, I mean, uh, you know. Well, maybe it keeps changing, doesn't it? It keeps changing. <laughs> it changes every album cover. Yeah, it does. Well, the last three or four, you know, he's been. He's definitely, much the same. He's definitely on the back. See ya. Yeah. Uh, going up? Have a nice time. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Is, is Fiona around? Uh, uh she's she's right for you. She might be. Our okay. kids are in there. She might be in there. Uh, so. If I don't see her, though, because I've got to catch a train in about 10 minutes. All right. Okay, so you better hurry up. Because my magazine in, in Finland, they um, they were very apprehensive about uh, you know the Eddie image. Mm -hmm. that they wouldn't really want to touch. But well, they're more sort of. Oh, I see. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, maybe we did the right thing for once, though, I don't know. Mm. For once. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't know if we can play games with it, you see. Mm. Five years' time, we may come up with a really horrendous, horrible album cover. We'll be selling six million albums worldwide, and people will go, <laughs> like that. Cause everybody have heart attacks. Now, now you have somebody in your own own company to compete with, you know, Wasp. <laughs> oh, Wasp, I'm trying to do outrageous well, things. We're not really interested in, in competing with the ones. They're, uh, they yeah. come from a totally different, yeah, angle, yeah. different direction. Mm. Yeah, they that's are right. all TT under. Yeah, I mean that's from the Alice Cooper Kiss. You know, mm -hmm. really Kiss. I mean, it's, mm. it's Kiss revisited. Mm. Yeah. You've seen them live, obviously. Never seen them live, no. No, I've seen videos of them live. Mm -hmm. so. They played in <coughs> Finland this coming week, or you mm -hmm. will, you'll be playing in, uh, in a month ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you, you have played in Finland before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's, um, uh, what do you remember from there? Compared to other Eastern European countries? Um, Finnish vodka <laughs> No, I no, 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 no. <laughs> I remember. I remember Finland. I remember being astonished at the number of people I saw standing around at about, um, we were coming back from the show and the streets, as we went up to the hotel, the streets were full of people, all drunk, <laughs> all fighting. And I Sounds was just, like a Friday night in film. And I was quite amazed. Um, <laughs> See what sort of uh, reaction <laughs> your concerts get the Finnish people. I don't think I've been to the concerts, no. Um, <laughs> But, uh, so, uh, no, the, um, the concerts were great, actually. Mm. 
the, the, what, the concert the concert in Helsinki was great. Um, I didn't get much much of a chance to stick around there in you know, a couple of days. And so what about Japanese audiences? I mean, uh, there was a broken in the tube uh, last year with the mm -hmm. heavy metal sort of revival of the kids in the park doing the <laughs> impressions. <laughs> Yeah. How do you find playing there with small fellows screaming there with their eyes? <laughs> ja <laughs> Japanese audiences. Um, again, they, they, have their own, they have their own sort of traditions. Mm. Um, they're very friendly audiences. I mean, I, I don't think there's a... Um, I, don't think, I don't think there's a single malicious person in the entire crowd when you play in Japan. I mean, everybody just seems deliriously happy. Mm. Um, um, either that or they're crying. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is a uh, <laughs> uh, But uh, no, I th everybody always seems, you know, incredibly happy when we play Japan. Um, and they throw wonderfully colourful things at you on stage. I mean, in, in America they throw hideous objects like Zippo lighters and coins and dangerous shops, rocks and things, <laughs> beer bottles. In Japan they throw little sort of, you know, Little little rubber squashy tennis balls and uh, balloons and paper streamers. And it's, it's all <laughs> oh yeah, hundreds and hundreds of paper streamers, like typewriter ribbons and things. And it's all um, it's all kind of like a sort of big carnival sort of thing. It's it's actually it must be a bit weird and plain. I mean, uh, it's quite nice actually. It's, I mean, it's different, you know. Your show is rather sort of uh, get the people up. Yeah, but they respond instantly. I mean, they all stand up and go, ah, like that. And they, and they respond instantly. That's the nice thing about it. Um, so you're, you're rather at a loss to, to know what to get them to do next. Mm. <laughs> I mean, but uh, you, you've been touring and playing in quite a few places around the world. Mm. Where, 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 where have been the weirdest gigs? You know, the weirdest gigs. Um, A couple of shows in uh, in America were pretty strange. Because America is such a big country, it can be fabulous one day, and then you end up in a middle, little hick town in the middle of nowhere, and the people are very strange. You know? And uh, some Rough of the shows, huh? huh? Roughnecks. Yeah. Well, some of the shows in we did a show in a in a university town called Charlotte, I think it was South Carolina, Charlotte, South Carolina. And the audience all, all stood up as we went on, you know. And at the end of the first number, there was total silence. I mean, silence, you know. <laughs> okay, next, that's the next song. Next song. You're working hard, nothing happens. <laughs> strange, you know. So in the middle of the show, I jumped out into the audience. Nobody moved. <laughs> Nobody came and tried to grab hold of you. They all stood there and thought, So I went into the audience and was walking, and they all still stood there in rows. <laughs> you know, in rows, I mean, like regimented, you know. Um, and uh, grabbed hold of this kid and said, uh, the band was still playing. You know, the mic was on. And in the middle of the audience, I said, would you mind saying a few words? I said, are you, are you actually enjoying yourself? Or are you just dead? <laughs> And he went, oh, I'm having a great time. I said, glad to hear it. You're not stuffed, are you, by any chance? He said, he said, oh, no, I don't think so. And I just went around the front row talking to people, going, what do you think of the show? all right. Yeah. And they just took it completely deadpan. Got back on stage. Maybe that number. And so we finished the show and all walked off to puzzled. I mean, just beyond, couldn't make it out at all. And... Um, they came back so they said it was the, mo the best concert they'd seen for ages and everything else. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> you know? Some sort of dummy, the moment. But they were like, university students, you know, I mean, very good. Well, science, science students, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know. I went back there. I, funny enough, I went back to the same town, um, not for rock and roll, just for see some friends. I was in a, a fencing tournament up there and I went and do the fence in the university gym there. And, uh, they're all very nice, you know. Make it out. <laughs> we know that you're going for, um, I don't know, well on the way for a world domination. I mean, deep pop reform. <laughs> Do you feel somehow that it would be some real strong competition, or 
Do you find yourself in a different league or something? No, I think we're a different, totally different bands, really. I mean, I don't think that. Um, well, be, no, none of us knows how they are going yeah. to be now. I, I, being I, I don't home. think. I don't think deep people are going to stop buying Iron Maiden records because you know Deep Purple have reformed. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't think it will really, uh, you know, affect affect either band. Really, I don't. Think, I can't see. Uh, People tried to make comparisons in the early days of Maiden, between Maiden and Purple, but I don't think those comparisons are really valid now. And they? I don't think I so. I mean, how about really. uh, the last number on the second side? Well, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's anything like Deep Purple. No, 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 no maybe not musically, but uh, uh, the new wave of uh, British heavy metal, mm -hmm. as it used to be known five years ago, I knew a part of, is turning to the old wave. I mean, a 13 minutes, 45 second yeah. number, isn't it very old-fashioned? No, there's nothing old-fashioned about... Um, I'm not using it in derogatory term, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm talking about the concept of a song, you know, of that length. It's Iron Maiden's first album had Phantom of the Opera on it. It wasn't that long? Eight minutes. <laughs> but it was rockier, wasn't it? As far as I remember. No. No. No more rocky than uh, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. In terms of speed of playing and tempo, this is one of the most up-tempo albums we've ever done. Yeah. Mm. No, no, but a concept, I mean, you know, along numbers like that, I, I still um, think it's, uh, you know... It know. works. It works great. It's a very exciting mm -hmm. line. You see, a lot of the old bands used to take a five-minute number, <coughs> And improvise, it to oh, minutes. don't tell me I'm old enough. <laughs> so, so I mean, this is where all the bullshit and the bore is. Oh God, that guitar! So, oh Christ, another drum solo. You know? mm -hmm. Whereas we don't do that. I mean, we we play, you know, the pieces and try and inject the life into mm -hmm. the song as it's as it's written. Um, this is the thing I always wondered about. Uh, again, new way of uh, British heavy metal. because there there were not all those trademarks of old heavy metal. I mean, rather hard <coughs> rock. I mean, there were not a uh, five minute, I don't know, well, uh, Richie Blackmore going on, or ten minute or whatever. Mm. You, you always worked as a unit, mm. more than they did. It was more, you know, uh, a showcase for them in those days than it is for you. It is a showcase for you as a unit, as a band, but not for individual people. Well, I think <coughs> with a lot of those groups, their reputations were based on the times when they were, they were working together as a unit. Um, all the great moments in Deep Purple's history were when the band was working as a unit. Mm. Uh, Deep Purple in Rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, was, was the band's yeah, yeah. finest, that, that incarnation's finest album. I think of the whole uh, Deep Purple incarnation, the finest album. Well, possibly, yeah, but I mean, Burn was also a fight, mm. and that was the whole band. Now, at any point in time, the band diverges, like, on Fireball, you know, you've got a couple of members of the band trying to go, oh, this is what we really want and we must do it. Well, of course, the whole band uh, is one-sided and it's not as good. Um, and Machine Head, all five of them, pull back together, great album. And the live album is, again, is, is everybody uh, everybody working as a unit, but given, you know, given working as a unit, oh, off you go, Richie, uh, right, come yeah. back, you know. And that's why it's so great, because it's on the edge. Yeah. It's on the edge. It's not... But the California... Deep Purple, the California Jam, that video, is, is just extravagant. Mm. I mean, you know, a 45-minute version of Space Truck in. I mean, it's like, you know? um, but that was, that was Deep Purple. You know, they could be brilliant one night and, like, another night. But that was, that was the band. What's your reaction then of them getting together now and playing? To try um, to get together, you know? If it's good, it'll be great. If it's not, it'll be terrible. But you doubt it, it's going to be. A... I've got no opinion. I mean, yeah. until I hear it, I won't prejudge it. I should probably go out and buy it and listen to it. Um, that's the only way. I mean, um, I'm not. Uh, uh, what I hope is that it's good because I'd hate to see my memories. <laughs> uh, of a great band 
shattered, tarnished. Well, I'm so a bit <laughs> yeah, worried about really. that, you know. <coughs> how, how is your own own music uh, progressing? I mean, you know, All right. <laughs> what direction is it going? If I can uh, butt in as well, um, this is the f actually second album, or actually the first album you've done with the same lineup. Yes. I mean, was it easier to do it now yeah. because the people were the same and you didn't have to bring anybody in and so on? I mean, uh, did you communicate easier? Yes. I mean, this album was written put together in about um, a week. We all sat around thinking ideas and but none of us actually we didn't the five of us sit down in a rehearsal room and, and, and actually learn the songs. That only took about a week to learn everything and put it all together and so that was a big advantage. That's why there's so much energy on this album. We haven't had to go through the process. Of, right, okay, we start. We do this, and then we've got to do this. And even this is even before we learn the songs. Well, we don't have to go through that, that terrible process, you know, of having to teach somebody all the old material, and then mm -hmm. teach them the new material, and then, you know. So um, it was very instant. And Nico and Steve were working together well anyway. So it was. Not, not really that much of a problem. Musically, um, I've got no idea. Well, I have got an idea where we're going next album, actually. Uh, but it's uh, the next album will be different again. Very, the, the next album's going to be a live album. The album in two years' time is going to be different again. To perhaps like. I'm, I'm, I'm already looking forward to it with great relish. We've got some great ideas. <laughs> well, you, why are you laughing? I've just we've got some great ideas. I'm really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I, I, I mean, I always enjoy seeing how the ideas turn out. Because I have idea, ideas now. And yeah. Two years' time will turn out totally differently. So I always enjoy seeing what happens to them. It's always interesting. You got credit for quite a few numbers in here. I mean, the, the hit single to Minister Midnight, it's yours mm -hmm. in the agents. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, it is obviously a democratic band, mm -hmm. although Steve Harris is the oldest member. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, is there any, any fight? Well, what is going to be the next single? I mean, no, does he try to say, well, it better be mine, you know, so I get the royalties or whatever? No, uh, that doesn't make any difference, really, because, I mean, the singles royalties are not that much anyway, not really, because it doesn't get released in America and we don't sell that many singles. Um, well, come on, you're, you're made top whatever in this country, the two minutes to live Well, yeah, I mean, well, I suppose it is, but I mean, we don't really... Compared to our or something. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't really uh, think about money in that sense at all. I mean, the money pours in, so why would you think? Right? Well, when the money wasn't pouring in, nobody thought about it. There was nothing to think about. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and now that it pours in. So why do you think about it now? Well, I don't know. I mean, people being um, essentially greedy. So if you have a you five, money, what you want to have a 50. If you have a 50, you want to have 50,000. Don't you? Well, no, because as long as everybody gets uh, roughly the same sort of, roughly the same sort of, Obviously, there's a huge imbalance. If there's one guy with no money, if there's another guy who's very rich, mm then that's the way to create balances, but everybody in the band gets you know, roughly the same sort of thing. Obviously in terms of in terms of publishing per album, Steve gets twice as much as me. Mm -hmm. So you earn twice as much as me. It's no problem. You don't feel um undressed about it? No. I mean now why am I asking I'm, that? I'm 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 very happy with with my contribution to the album, um, if I tried to force myself to write any more than was on there, I'd be dredging up, you know, sure I could write another two or three songs, and uh, they'd probably be fairly mediocre. They'd be okay, it'd be okay, probably a lot of bands would be happy with them, but uh, it wouldn't really be that instant or 
something. Um, and uh, you know, I it doesn't it doesn't really you know bother me that uh, you know somebody writes you know a third of the album. Actually, it's fairly evenly evenly distributed. It's about about sort of. 50-50-60-40 whichever way around I don't feel left out on the album put it that way mm -hmm. and the, the financial aspect of it um, doesn't you know, doesn't worry me I'm not I'm not that greedy you know, everybody's very happy why why should you know, why should you want money to interfere with what's essentially a creative endeavour I think it did split uh, quite a few big bands Sorry? It did quite um, money did split quite a few bands. Yes, I think uh, money and uh, associated evils. E evils, yes. Money associated evils, egos, drugs, and everything else. It all, all enters into it, and um, <clears throat> I'd like to think we were too sensible for anything else like that to happen. having done this amount of touring for this amount of time, if we haven't turned into drug-crazed lunatics by now, I don't think we ever will. I mean, I've noticed none of them uh, had um, any of the drugs. I mean, you're, you're keeping no, the photographers. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I've noticed the photographers, yeah. Well, I don't take them. I don't indulge at all. You don't drink? Oh, no, I, I drink and I take... And I drink and uh, I drink a lot of tea as well. Um, it's so it's quite interesting that your band, you know, you have such a, you know, hard and aggressive image musically and otherwise, but as persons you are. Well, you are, you see. Well, we can all be quite hard, aggressive people. You don't have to take drugs to be yeah. aggressive in terms of saying what you believe or saying what you want. Um, I mean, if it's usually as heavy metal as boozing and... Well, that, that, in well, that's it. I mean, and especially if you uh, keep on touring like you, I mean, people yeah. tend to turn on to some other substances as a relief or as a, you know, enthusiasm booster or something. Oh yes, but that's the thing. You say if you do that, then you you blow the you blow the confidence. Yeah, yeah I can't perform. See, I can't perform if you're not fully conscious. If of I'm not the absolutely hundred percent. Uh, if physically I'm only. 80% on any given day, then mentally I have to try and be as alert as I can, which means no drugs, no alcohol, nothing before a show. A couple of cups of coffee mm. is about it. And an aspirin if I've got a headache. Um, well, what's the secret then of the band being sort of relaxed? I mean, uh, during 11 months and what? How do we relax, about? in other words? How do we relax? Um, well, not, not to uh, get things done. Well, it depends where we are. Um, we all know each other's habits fairly well by now. It's just like it's a it's a way of life which we which we live, and uh, everybody gets you know you have your little tensed up things now and again. Whether it's because you know either his feet smell or you know you, you know he's eat your cornflakes, you know. There's a bit of breath but, or something. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, it's all on that really, really petty kind of level, yes. you know, he ate your mm -hmm. cornflakes, or I wanted to stop for a McDonald's, oh, you know, or, <laughs> you know, or, or something like that. Um, and most of those things don't really occur now. Um, we all have our own hobbies and our own relaxations and pursuits, which most of us hardly ever get any time to do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but we all know each other fairly well enough by now to have to, to avoid doing that. The main thing is if every day you, the most important thing in the day is the concert. Right? As long as your life revolves around that, then uh, you've got something to measure everything else by. Mm -hmm. You measure, now I have a day off, tomorrow I have one concert, then another day off. That means I can go out and I can enjoy myself and get fucked out of my brain and drunk tonight and it won't affect the concert tomorrow too much because I can stay in bed all day and get over my hangover and I can still do a good show tomorrow night. So, so you go out and you enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. The next day you go, I better call it and stay in and watch TV and have a quiet night because I've got four shows ahead of me. And then the last night of the fourth show, 
you've got a day off the next day. You want to go crazy, you go crazy. You know? So, there's, you know, it's just being sensible. You can't take something out and not expect to have to give something back in return. You have to, you know, it's called growing up, being adult. <laughs> in the adult orientated world, yeah. yeah. Would you regard the London dates you know, that you're doing uh, next week as the most important, you know, critical audience? No, we just go and enjoy them. Because if you go out, there's no different attitude. To Not really. There's always a little bit, of, a little bit more pressure, but you have to try and uh, you have to try and ignore it. You know, surprise yourself. Turn up at the show five minutes before you go on stage or something. Just ignore all the people coming up, you know, shaking your hand, going to tell you how wonderful you are. You're ignore all that, just, just go down the pub or something like that, or go around the corner, or go and have fish and chips, or just go for a walk, just ignore it all. Um, or do whatever, and some people thrive on it, makes some people feel better. You know, people come in shaking their hand, telling them they're wonderful and they're great before a show, it makes them feel better, so that makes them feel better than great. Um, personally, I mean, I, I prefer to be left alone before a show. Ten. Then we better go then. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no just for ten or four hours. No, just for like uh, ten, fifteen minutes. Just, just immediately before I go on stage. I like to just go somewhere quiet and just sit down and just sit down. Just complete peace and quiet. Just, just meditate. Well, sort of. I mean, I, I, I sort of stretch a little bit before I go in because I find it helps me relax. Mm. And. Um, you're doing some of these ridiculous stretching things and everything, you know, stretching hamstrings and back and things like that. And while you're doing it, it's um, it's a kind of meditation because you all you're, all you're thinking about is because you're putting yourself through all this pain mm. for a quarter of an hour before a show, mm. and it it builds up your adrenaline level because mm. your response to the pain is to produce adrenaline to combat the pain. And you're thinking, why am I doing this? Because I'm going on stage in 15 minutes. And I tried, I've got so sort of hooked on it now, that I tried not doing it for uh, for a show. And I felt terrible. I felt like I was at the sound check. I felt like I shouldn't be there. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how I ever used to go, go on stage without doing it before. You know, I mean, well, the answer was I used to go on stage and... I used to pull muscles. I used to go on stage and used to go on so tense that I'd try and go absolutely crazy the first two numbers and I'd come on with come off with um, trapped nerves, pulled muscles, God knows what. I mean you'd think I'd been I was a boxer or something, injuries I used to get. So now I go on and I'm relaxed and I leap around and I don't get injuries. <laughs> I'm happy. Let's hope you have a nice show tonight. Yeah. Do you do you look upon the people? who look uh, on you at the stage as a demigod. Well, I don't know about that. Well, I want to ask you, I mean, uh, as an uh, independent or rather non-aligned observer at the gigs, I mean, heavy metal gigs is always something of a, re a religious experience. You know what I mean? There, there is something special about it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't come on any other gigs, especially not with electronic bands, you know. Yeah, it's always yeah, it's always a lot of excitement and atmosphere. It's because I suppose, you know, people wait for ages to see us. When they do see us, they're going, you know, they appreciate it because you know we don't we playing around so much. We don't get time to play um, very often in you know one place. We're playing maybe once a year. So I suppose when we get there, people are happy to see us. You know, happy to see them. So do you appreciate the, this way that, that you tour the world, or did you prefer the, the old way when you were less known and less popular, or there was a less demand for you to play Australia and Japan and go for the sake in America? Yes, it's, it's um, I think it makes it, you appreciate success more when you've you know when you're not so much in demand and you, you can't get a lot of work. And, you know, you're not, I think when you do get success, you appreciate it more. You know. Um, I 
Tzim? Yeah, a very big question. After the initial, uh, uh, again, uh, surge of uh, new wave British uh, heavy metal, it's become a lull. I mean, except you and Saxon, nobody came out of that. And the, at the moment, uh, there is no new bands coming up. Mm. What do you think it, it's so? Uh, I mean, I think there's still, I think there's still plenty of bands around, but uh, maybe record companies aren't signing them up as fast as they were. In sort of 1980, I don't know. I think there's still plenty of bands around. I think there always will be. You know, just playing clubs and pubs. But um, I think you just get a lot of bands. Um, maybe they formed around that time. And um, it's always the same. You get a, you get a surge of interest in something. Everyone's doing it for a year, and then everyone sort of forgets them anyway. But I think a lot of bands, um, bands of any sort of depth to them will last, maintain success and keep writing albums and, you know, put on good shows. But I think there's, I think there's still a lot of, you know, probably every bands are. But maybe they just aren't, aren't getting the breaks that we had in 1918. Is there any ambition left for I made? Ambition? Well, we played most of the world, but next year we're going to go to South America. Mm -hmm. This is not that. <coughs> so I suppose that's, that's a big place we haven't been to yet. Plus, this is um, <coughs> this is going to be our first headline into all the states. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. We've still got a lot to do. Well, what kind of places are going to play? <coughs> How um, big are What size? Um, pretty big. I mean, like sports arenas, things like that. We get 10 or 15,000 people. We're actually touring with um, Saxon and Fast Way in the States. So we're interested to see how it goes, because it's only our third tour. Mm -hmm. Although we have spent a lot of time over there in the past two years, but it's our first actual headliner, which is quite unusual. Most bands have to do like five or six tours before they can get to that level. Mm -hmm. 